Now let's move on to the next topic GIF Act, Scheme and Code. The Hierarchy of Authority The hierarchy of authority shall be in the order as given below. 1. Kerala Infrastructure Investment Fund Act, GIF Act. 2. Kerala Infrastructure Investment Fund Scheme, GIF Scheme. They are the primary authority to define the functions of KIFB. 3. Code of Business for KIFB, KIFB Code. They are the primary authority to introduce a procedure in the form of a policy to execute the functions as detailed in the KIF Act and Scheme. 4. Manual of Business Procedures for KIFB details the operational policies. 5. Standard operating procedures contain function-wise detailed procedures. The original act is called the Kerala Infrastructure Investment Fund Act 1999, which came into force on 11th November 1999. This act was later amended as Kerala Infrastructure Investment Fund Amendment Act and it came into force on 19th August 2016. Let's now look into the key sections of KIF Act. Section 2, subsections KA and ID discusses the detailed definition of SPVs. Section 3A lays down the criteria for projects in order to get financial assistance. These projects are referred by the government to the board. The board approves the projects which satisfy a set of criteria. They are 1. Project of value exceeding Rs. 100 crores implemented by a public agency. 2. For the purpose of assessing the value, projects not less than Rs. 10 crore may be grouped into tranches so that it satisfy the demand on the 100 crore value. 3. If the provisions of the Act are satisfied by a public-private partnership, then their projects will be approved by a general or special order of the government. Sections 4, 6 and 6A of GIF Act contains the constitution, functions and general powers of the board. The Chief Minister of Kerala is the chairperson of the board. The Finance Minister of Kerala is the vice chairperson. The Chief Executive Officer of KIFB is the Member Secretary. Other members are Senior Government Secretaries including the Chief Secretary and renowned experts. Section 6B details the composition of the Executive Committee. It is a subcommittee of the board with the Finance Minister of Kerala as the chairperson. The Executive Committee has the power to approve projects up to 100 crore estimated value. It also approves the SOPs of KIFB. Section 6C, 6D and 6E details the constitution, functions and powers of the Fund Trustee and Advisory Commission FTAC. The FTAC functions as a trustee to the investors and advisor to KIFB. The duties of FTAC are it ensures accountability to the maximum extent on the part of KIFB. It also examines the activities of KIFB, its lendings and fund availability, and issues fidelity certificates every six months. Section 8 mentions the powers of the board to borrow and lend. As per Section 17A, KIFB has the power to appoint an inspection authority to inspect any projects and the documents of any special purpose vehicle implementing the same that has been financed by the board. Now let's move on to the next topic, Kerala Infrastructure Investment Fund Scheme, KIF Scheme. As per Section 3 of the KIF Act, for the establishment of a fund for investments in the infrastructure projects of the state, the government has to notify a scheme which is called the Kerala Infrastructure Investment Fund Scheme, KIF scheme. 
The first scheme was notified in the year 1999 and was amended in 2021. The GIF scheme contains detailed procedures for fund mobilization, project approval and lending. Let's discuss some of the major clauses in GIF scheme. As per clause 4 of the GIF scheme, to invest in infrastructure projects in the state, financial assistance from the fund may be in the form of equity, grants or loans. The amount of loan, equity or grants to be borrowed shall be determined by the board on the basis of each project. And the terms and conditions of the loans shall be based on the repayment agreement entered between the board and the public agency. Clause 8 discusses the tripartite agreement among the government, special purpose vehicle and KIFB for funding approval. It also mandates submission of a detailed project report, DPR, by the SPV to KIFB. Clause 9 details the method to be followed for preparation and submission of DPR and details and documents that are to be a part of the DPR. Clause 10 mentions that KIFB can decide the fund release method. Clause 11 says that a repayment agreement must be signed in the case of projects listed as revenue earning by KIFB. Also note, we will be discussing the basic steps of project submission and approval as a separate section in this module. We will also have a detailed module on the topic later. It is mentioned in Clause 12a that all the projects considered for appraisal and financial sanction shall be monitored by the Inspection Authority IA, in accordance with the powers of the IA mentioned in KIF Act Section 17a. Other duties of the Inspection Authority include it shall look into the administrative and technical aspects of the projects by monitoring their implementation status, physical progress, work quality, procedural aspects to be followed, and adherence to the board standards and processes from a cost-benefit standpoint. The Inspection Authority's reports must be given to the CEO, EC, or the board as a remedial action Non-performing SPVs will be identified and recommended for disqualification. The SPVs shall take corrective steps as ordered by the IA. Violations will result in KIFB suspending the work and the government taking disciplinary actions against the SPV, including alternative work arrangements. Our next topic is KIFB Code. The introductory part of KIFB code. Various subsections of section 6A of the KIF Act authorizes the board of KIFB to regulate its own procedures, disburse all expenses related to the administration of the fund, including travel, interest on borrowings, fees, professional charges, and other expenses, to do all acts necessary for and incidental to the carrying out of the function entrusted or delegated to it. In the 40th meeting, the board has entrusted the Chief Executive Officer of KIFB to prepare a draft code of business for KIFB and place it in the board for approval. The approved KIFB code contains key business policies that are detailed into micro-level procedures in manuals and standard operating procedures. KIFP code shall be identified with letters and numbers. It should be noted that this code should be read along with the KIF Act and the scheme. The code contains the following parts. Part A. Code of General Management Functions Part B. Project Appraisal Functions Part C. General Principles for Inspection Authority Functions Part D Financial Management Functions and Part E Works and Procurement Functions As per the KIFB Code 38 Part A Under the Board and Executive Committee there is a Management Committee The Committee is chaired by the CEO The Deputy Managing Director is the Vice Chairperson the heads of divisions and wings of KIFB are the members of the committee. 
all important matters that require collective decision making and draft agenda for EC and the board are to be placed in front of this committee for its recommendation. Code 42 Part A mentions the Project Appraisal Division PAD in KIFB, which is the contact point for administrative departments and SPVs for all matters relating to their onboarding to the PFMS portal, DPR submission, appraisal, approval, implementation, review, and final closure of the projects. As per Code 4, Part B, once the government approves a project for KIFP funding, the administrative department concerned shall issue an administrative sanction in the form of a government order. The administrative sanction order shall specify the following. A. The name of the project. B. Location of the project including the legislative assembly constituency. C. The estimated amount of the project. D the special purpose vehicle who shall be implementing the project. It is mentioned in Code 5 Part B that the administrative sanction order should also contain an abstract project report. As per Code 23 Part D, project funds shall be released to the bank accounts of the actual beneficiaries, that is, contractors and SPVs. It is based on the fund release proposals submitted by the SPVs. SPVs shall submit the payment sanction orders and supporting documents as mandated by the manual on fund release. As per Code 25 Part D, KIFB shall have the authority to accept or return or reject the fund release proposals based on compliance checking as per the Manual of Business Procedures. As per Code 26 Part D, KIFP shall not be a party in the financial obligations and arrangements between the contractors and the SPVs or implementing agencies or administrative departments. As per Code 27 Part D, Centage charges at the rate decided by the Government of Kerala in its finance department shall be released directly to the designated bank accounts of the As per Code 28 Part D, fines and other revenues received by the SPVs, including revenue from the demolition of old structures, can be remitted in any of the two ways. The SPVs shall remit it to a designated bank account of KIFB and KIFB shall remit it to the appropriate received head of the account of Government of Kerala or they shall remit it directly to the aforesaid received head of the account of Government of Kerala. With this, we have come to the end of the session. You may refer to the documents attached for more information on the topic.